Hey YouTube, uh, Alan Barr from alanmbarr.com here, internal product manager, internal tools, platforms. Uh, today I wanted to show you uh, some information about open API specification, and you might be wondering to yourself, what is this? What does it matter? What, what's the whole point of it? And uh, I think what you're going to learn today is how it can help you if you're making a lot of uh, programs that can, can talk over a network and you know they're talk, speaking over HTTP they can talk more effectively they can know how to send the right data that you can keep in sync and if you only have one this may not like be super important uh, but essentially if you are a developer an engineer uh, you like to be able to know how to do things and that's what the open API specifications for is to help you know what you're supposed to do to send information uh, and to get responses and all those kinds of things. So today what I want to do is I want to show you uh, a tutorial that I worked through uh, from the I rather be writing.com website and then I kind of summed up uh, for my purposes because I work on internal products that I want our developers to use the open API specification and the benefit they get is that uh, it makes it more automatic to have documentation for your applications for your APIs. So let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my screen really uh, in just a moment. And you you can see here I have the uh, Swagger open source editor on the screen. Uh, that's wonderful. And the the main challenge that I see with people and the open API specification is the format is YAML. Uh, yet another markup language. Uh, it is essentially a superset of JSON, which means that even though you can see all this like white space, it's really JSON. So there's really a lot of curly braces that are, are there, uh, but you don't see them. So you could, you, you could basically use an online app to transform this from this YAML syntax into JSON, where you'd see a lot of curly braces and commas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but those get kind of tedious to work through. Uh, so what I wanna do today is I wanna show you how to kind of understand and read this uh, because it's a lot of text to read through in this demo example uh, from that tutorial uh, you know this is this is a lot of stuff and if you're not super familiar with working with apis it might be kind of overwhelming and daunting uh, but it's really not if you if you just focus on different sections of it first you'll realize that it's actually pretty simple so if you change any of this content, it will update the pane on the right, which is the rendered version of the uh, the Swagger UI. Uh, and then on the left is the Swagger editor. These are open source products. Uh, so getting started, we start with the open API specification version. Uh, we're looking at 3.0.3. .3. There's a newer version out there, but many tools do not support it yet. It's 3.1. In addition, there is an info object right below that. And just to go back a moment, the, that open API section is very important because that's how the parsers understand that this is whatever document it is. Uh, so there was a previous version of open API called uh, uh, open API 2.0. Uh, it was less streamlined for sharing data. 3.0 has been reorganized to allow you to better duplicate data in a way that isn't so noisy. So if we go back to the info object now, You'll see there's different parts of this content, title, description. The description you can see has uh, a, a, a markdown format called common mark that you can use to uh, have it be highlighted in the UI. Uh, there's a version which would be related to the version of the API that you're you know, planning to provide to your users. Uh, you can include a link to t terms of service, contact information, you know, who to email, where, you know, what website to go to, and then a license if this is a open source product or if you want to keep it you know copyright or just exclude it all together if it's just internal anyways no one really is worried about forking it or what have you so all that information powers sections of this rendered website for users to to view and understand how can they interact with your api next uh, there are some features that you don't exactly uh, see at the top. So you can really put any of this information at any point in the document. The, the, the Swagger UI will render it perfectly fine. Uh, so after the info, I will talk about tags. So you can see tags here. 
So right now there's just one set of tags, so it, it groups the different endpoints. Maybe you have different endpoints that you want to segregate for whatever reason. So in here you can see that the tags is related to the current weather, weather data. And then there's a description. And that you can put on uh, here, so you can see on one of the paths, and I'll get into that in a, a little bit later, but it's tagged to show up in that little bundle. Uh, pretty pretty self-explanatory, not too complicated. Next, uh, there is external docs, and uh, I'll have to search for this one. I don't know where it is. It's been a while since I've, okay, here it is. So this is another way to uh, include a informational resource somewhere else uh, to direct users to learn more about your API. Uh, it's beneficial because you really can't fit in, you probably don't want to fit a lot of information to understand how to use this in this one document. It's really just like, what is the machine going to tell you that you absolutely need to know? Everything else you can include somewhere else. External docs are very important. Uh, in addition, there is servers. You can indicate what server this is living on. Uh, in a Kubernetes world, it gets a little bit more complicated, uh, but there's a lot of extended features you can do with servers, such as uh, templating, and you can have different regional endpoints. It's very flexible. They've made it very flexible to include where you can uh, send the information. You can click this drop down, and it'll give you the option. So you, you can keep it as absolute and direct and precise as you want, or you can you know get pretty creative with that. Next is security. Security lives in a thing called components. I'm not gonna go into components just yet. I'm leaving that to the end because it's a little complicated. So if we look at security, and the reason why security is important is because your API typically is not gonna be public, or even if it is public, you wanna limit who and how they can get data uh, because you know it is. if you run a server, it costs money to run it, you might get charged for network egress ingress. So we have this security schemes information here. It, live, it lives under uh, the components and schemas. So in this, we have app ID, type, API key, description, name, inquiry. So basically we're saying that as long as there is in the query uh, string of the, you know, the website, the URL up here, you can see, um, you can append a key value pair of API key uh, or, or app ID rather uh, is equal to and then some value that is the key. So you can retrieve the data securely. Uh, there's a lot of other security schemes I won't get into, uh, but that's how you would do it. So if I look up uh, security in here, uh, so here it's it's basically referencing that information about security. So just a high level information about security. Now, the most important thing about the open API specification uh, and RESTful APIs are the paths or the routes. And the reason why they're important is because that's how you send information, that's how you receive the information back about what you're trying to, to know about with your program. So uh, in your paths, you have information about you know how to, what route to call to get data. So in this case, it's weather. Uh, there are, like we talked about the tags of, you know, what, what is it related to, uh, the summary of the information of, uh, the particular route, a description, more information, uh, that, that could show up in the UI if you, uh, open it up a little bit. And then, uh, so for example, parameters. So if I send a query, a get query with parameters, you know, these are all going to be like, appended to that URL. Uh, so I can get more precise about exactly what I'm looking for, and then the server can return that back to me and tell me, okay, I figured out that you wanted this, you know, here you are. And then I also know what kind of responses I'm going to receive. So if it's a good response, I'm going to get a 200 back. If it's a bad response, I'm going to get a 404. So 404 is typically not found. It was a bad query, whatever you passed in. Um, not super detailed kinds of responses. I think these are, it's a good, uh, division between two types of responses. Either it's good or bad. So very clear. And there isn't really a whole lot else to this uh, API. That I think that's the benefit of it, is that it's very simple. Uh, it's just one route. You, But it is complicated in the sense that you can pass in all kinds of information. And that's where we get into components. So, so you probably saw a lot of stuff here, uh, like this dollar sign ref, and it might look a little complicated, 
and it is it is a little complicated but not not incredibly complicated so what these are are these shareable blocks of information so anything in the open api specification can be shareable within itself and the way you make it shareable is using this uh, json schema reference to the document and basically you're telling it like look in this document and you can even link to outside documents even uh, on other web web pages or a file even uh, it just depends on how you bundle up all the, the you know the uh, the documents but essentially uh, so for parameters it's very verbose it's very big you know it, it would probably be really hard to read if it was all in this so what they're doing in in their open api specification is they have a path to basically saying in this document in the components in parameters look up q so you know we go to components, which is all the shareable components, everything that we can reuse. So it could, so it could be responses, it could be parameters, it could be uh, requests, it could be security schemes, etc. So in here, you know we have the queue parameters, and it's all the same information. Uh, there's some detailed information about like what is a schema, what is it exactly? Is it a string? Is it a number, etc. Uh, so all that is pretty uh, basic. Uh, enum is interesting. If you have a list of things that you only want them to provide, that's helpful to use. Uh, and then further schemas are like the responses or requests. So you can go further and you can say exactly, you know, what comes back in the in the payload, what is what information is there, and we have further you know JSON schema references to other parts of the document of of the data payload. So in this case, there's examples of wind, clouds, rain, snow, objects that are getting passed back. And we can we can look further in this document to find out, okay, wind. A wind object looks like this. There's a title, uh, the type is an object, so it'll be a JSON object that's returned, and then what properties are in it. So in that object, there'll be a speed, uh, there'll be a degree, so on and so forth. So this is really not that complicated. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. The The challenge with it, it just look, looks kind of daunting. It's a lot of text to read. Uh, so I could totally imagine somebody would look at this and, you know, their eyes glaze over and just like, what do I need to do? And you really don't need to do a whole lot. It's just like, what do you look, what are you looking to do with this API? What do you want to call? What do you want to return? This gives you a map to figure out how to do that. And historically with APIs, it, you don't always have access to the code. So you can't just read up and find out, oh, okay, I, I need, it's looking for this. This is what I need to provide. Especially if it's run by other people, uh, you may not know, they might change it rapidly. Uh, and that's the biggest struggle is the value that this provides is if you're working on many, many APIs, not just one. If it's just one, this is beneficial, but it's not really adding as much value. Where you get the value is when you start reusing a lot of the different kinds of information that's still the same. So. Uh, one thing I, I glossed over, haven't really covered a lot, is the schemas. So kind of touched on this a moment, but this is what really makes it valuable is that you can specify exactly what those data objects are that are going to be returned or need to be sent. And if you work on a lot of different APIs, you can basically uh, share and reuse them and continue to reference them in all your things. and Ideally, it should help make it more maintainable over time, just because the more you have of things, the more duplication, the, the more risk of things are going to be out of date, and it's pretty normal. So what I want you to do is consider using Open API 3.0 in your next project if you're not already using it. Uh, and the reason why is you can provide out of the box with your application a way for others to know how to interact uh, they'll get a really handy page, you know, to query it exactly. It really helps business people that, you know, really don't want to get into the command line or, you know, maybe they want to use Postman, maybe they don't. Uh, that's very beneficial. And then if you can provide this in a way that people can access it and generate their own clients from, uh, that's one of the benefits of a tool like Swagger Hub or open API, you know, generators is that you can start from a API that already has everything filled in for you. It's not the prettiest thing, but it, it works and it will save you some, some time. So if you're, it's really about volume. Are you working on volume? Because then that, that's where it plays in. Uh, so look for Open API 3.1 in the future. It's not totally supported yet. It really fixes a lot of stuff related to JSON schema. But uh, again, 
if you're working on APIs, you know, documentation is super important. People just want to know what do they need to do. And I think it's, it's just essential. Uh, if we want to build new businesses, new products on API experiences, uh, leveraging this as a tool is just, it's just a must have, uh, if you're in a, working in a restful HTTP kind of world. So it's uh, table stakes, table stakes. All right, everybody. Well, you have a great day. Uh, check out any other videos I have uh, and excited to uh, talk to you further and share more stuff I'm learning.